Hey, everybody, welcome aboard. Um, we're going to kick off in a minute or two's time. Super excited. Brad, thanks for joining us, dude. Um, sure. This is a big, important issue. We're going to have people joining us from all over. And uh, frankly, man, grateful for your help and assistance in this area. Thank you so much, by the way, for keeping your hair consistent with my photo here. <laughs> I do my best. It's tough I when I'm at home had alone, but long locks and you shave them off this morning <laughs> just to be consistent with the graphics. I do what I can. Yeah. There's nothing quite worse than a graphic design inconsistency, you know? Agreed, man. You gotta keep your branding together. Exactly. Cool. Well, um uh Dude, grateful for you. Uh, we're going to kick off in about 60 seconds time. I just want to make sure the tech is all working. If you guys can uh, see me, hear me, and see Brad, then we're doing it right. Uh, please confirm that you can. Beautiful. Uh, amazing. Um, yeah, man. Grateful for you. Let me just check. Recording's good. Perfect. So team, welcome aboard. Uh, excited about today's session. Uh, we've got Brad Weimar in the house. Weimar, is that how I pronounce it? Weimar, people want to throw an A in there sometimes. I'm not totally sure why, but it's better than Weimert. So it's Weimar. Weimar. Yeah, man. That's, I'm an Aussie. We, we add A's to everything, dude. Uh, mm -hmm. This is Brad. He runs Easy Pay Direct. Uh, we, we know each other through Jason Gaynard's network at Mastermind Talks. We've hung out and had a really good... Uh, Really good, did we eat sushi? I don't know, really good feed somewhere in Austin. I can't remember what we ate, it was great. Um, and uh, for a little bit of context crew, I had a conversation in a group, Todd Herman started uh, a thread talking about payments and how because of what's going on in the world right now, there's a, there's a risk to, frankly, a risk to, to your payment processor, whether you use Stripe or uh, PayPal or whoever you use, anyone with recurring payments uh, where you collect money at the start of the month and deliver over the course of the month, that's an issue. And also people who, who get paid a big chunk of money up front and then deliver over the course of the year, that's a risk. And uh, I was like, oh crap, I hadn't even considered that and uh, wanted to make sure that we were covered. So I reached out to Brad, who was one of the people tagged into the post who added a ton of value to do a session today on how to protect your payments. Um, by the way, I just wanted to acknowledge everyone for showing up with their webcam on, except for Stacy and Chris Dufay. I just want to spotlight Chris for going the extra mile right now. Um, nothing like a professional webcam setup, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I turn the lights on when needed. I'm, uh, I'm going dark right now. It's 6 a.m. in Bali right now. Um, so Chris is in a unique position where he he's a coach who bills on monthly recurring, and also his clients are fitness pros who bill on recurring as well. So he's like double, um, you know, double up for this. Uh, Brad, I just want to say welcome aboard, man. Stoked that you're here. Thank you so much. I'm just going to let you um, riff for a bit. I've dropped a link to a workbook in the chat. If you guys want a, uh, a copy, it's just a place to take notes um, with a sexy front cover and some action steps at the back. But Brad, um, can you just kick us off, bro? Uh, maybe 60 seconds of who you are and what you do. Uh, and then sure. let's talk about why this stuff matters. Yeah, so um, Brad Weimer, uh, I founded Easy Pay Direct about 10 years ago. We predominantly help uh, people accept credit cards who do not have the card present. So anytime you're not swiping a card or putting the chip into a machine, that increases the likelihood of um, fraud, dispute, et cetera, statistically. And it yeah. puts you at a higher risk of having payments held or having your account shut down. So we specialize in helping people navigate that. Love it. And you've been in the, you know, the coaching kind of info space for quite a while. I know you work with Tony Robbins and a few others. Uh, are there a bunch of industries you serve? Is it predominantly this or are there two or three kind of sweet spots? Like why, why coaching specifically? Yeah, coaching specifically. So uh, Tony Robbins, Dean Graziosi, Frank Kern, um, it, on and on and on. Uh, probably 20 some odd percent of our portfolio are people selling information, yeah. which often has a coaching component to it. Yeah. Um, and there are other industries that we're very heavy in. We're very heavy in the supplement space. Um, we're pretty heavy in the software as a service space, but the common thread 
is that the card isn't present and there's a higher likelihood of having an issue with your merchant account provider. Yeah, right. And that's predominantly because of card not present or is it because of something else? So, uh, it, you know, it's a number of things, um, but it, it, it rolls up to um, the increased likelihood of either fraud or a dispute. Um, yeah, in right. this case, the concern is a dispute. Yeah. Um, so I think it's helpful to understand kind of fundamentally what I'm talking about, like what's risk, what's, what's, why is there any risk? What's risk? I don't get it. Um, and the, the underlying issue is that consumers, um, and there's some extra rules to this, but Visa and MasterCard give all consumers six months to dispute anything they buy. So six months they can dispute a charge and it's six months from the final point of delivery. So wow. the concern for a business owner or I'm sorry, the concern for a credit card processor is that you as a business owner won't be around anymore and then people will want their money back and the credit card processor will then have to pay it back. They're then responsible if your business isn't there. Got so it. that's the so, underlying concern. Just so I'm clear, let's say you get paid here and you stop delivering here. Six months later, they are still like in, in their books, you're still a risk. I think you should sell your time as being somebody that joins Zoom meetings for people right now and just draws these pictures because it's pretty fucking awesome. Dude, that's, that's pretty much my whole world. I can't think without a, a Crayola in my hand and this is digital it. Crayola right here. So we're going to do this. I love it, man. And yeah, you're, you're spot on. That's exactly right. So, okay. And so when you say risk, predominantly we're looking at this through the Mert, through Visa, uh, Visa, MasterCard, maybe even Amex's eyes. Uh, even though the clients look at us as a service provider, in terms of the, the uh, credit card processing company, they see us as risk because if we, if God forbid something happens and we're not um, still around, then who's left holding the, the exposure is them. They're going to have to pay the money out of there and they're not into losing money. You got it. And by the way, I'll use the term Visa and MasterCard a lot. It includes Discover and Amex. I'm only saying Visa and MasterCard because it's shorter and because they are 92, 93% of the market. Okay. Um, but it, right. it applies so, to all providers. When you say Visa and MasterCard, we hear everything with a yep. credit card. You got it. <laughs> Roger that. Okay, cool. So from their point of view, we're, we're a risk and it's up to six months from the final point of delivery. Um, I totally understand that. Now, can you put that in the context of what's going on in the world right now? Yeah. So you, you open the call by saying, well, what are the th you know, what, what industries have more risk and there, or why is this a risk? And mm. there are tons of different things that play into this. Um, and just to be clear, this is ever present, right? This is a theme in uh, merchant services, credit card processing all the time. What's happening now is just exacerbating the issue for business owners and yes. for credit card processors um, and for good reason. So uh, there are tons of like right the there right away you can think of tons of businesses that are having challenges right now right yes yeah um, the tr travel industry is an obvious one right live events is an obvious one um, those are things that the the underpinning of all of it at the moment in the short run with the COVID situation is that consumers aren't going to get the products that they originally agreed to buying yeah right. And that's, what, that's when chargebacks happen, right? That is yep. when this risk is present, is the consumer doesn't get what they expected to get. So the issue at the moment, the first wave right away, um, one of the largest processors in the US um, sent a, a notice out to providers, to us, and mm. said, hey, there are 15 industries, effective immediately, we're going to hold 10% of their money moving forward. Wow. They didn't close any accounts off the top. They just said, we're keeping 10% of the money moving forward. And that was um, bus lines, travel agencies, furniture companies, caterers, real estate agents, lodging, health spas, theaters, uh, professional sports teams, tourist attractions, uh, golf clubs, athletic mm. clubs, amusement parks, social services organizations. And the last one on the list, I think, is the big one, which was membership organizations not elsewhere classified. Well, wow, that's so, a pretty broad category. Exactly. And the, the challenge is that our industry, the way that we, most of the world works this way, but we funnel businesses into what we call merchant category codes. And another vernacular for this would be SIC codes. 
Um, but it's the same thing. It's just a code that we clump businesses together with to help make it easier to categorize them. Yep. Um, so membership organizations not elsewhere classified is a specific code. But yeah. when you think, like, think about it like this, somebody on the other end is setting up your merchant account, could, could be an algorithm in the case of like a Stripe, or yeah. it could be a human. Either way, they're just funneling you into this category. Sometimes they're right. Sometimes they're not so right. So, so you could be a gym and misclassified out of fitness and into membership organization, not elsewhere categorized. 100%. Mm -hmm. 100%. And so, for example, you know, we're very heavy in the supplement space also. And in supplements, we have some people categorized as online supplement companies accurately, yep. or they're categorized as a health and nutrition store, or they're categorized as a grocery store. Well, those have very different risk profiles. Those are totally yes. different things. Um, but it's important for business owners to recognize that like, just because you don't fit squarely into one of these buckets, doesn't mean that everything's okay. <laughs> right. Okay. That's really interesting. And so uh, this is really helpful. So there's a, there's a chance that uh, because we have um, a group of clients in a membership on a recurring monthly basis, we might be classified as membership organizations, not elsewhere categorized. That's the risk or one of the risks. Yeah. Well, and to be clear, this is just an example of one processor that did this immediately as a result of the pandemic, right? Yeah. So they, a week, a week into the full world lockdown, uh, they, they did this, but the underlying issue is that anything that has a future deliverable yes. um, has an increased likelihood of dispute, right? Right yeah. now, anything that is a high ticket has an increased likelihood of dispute because the longer people are in lockdown, the higher unemployment's going to go the more people are going to want their money back for things that they have bought because yeah. money will get tighter. Yep. Um, and then the other thing that makes coaching uh, a challenge at large. And one of the reasons we love it is because it's subjective in quality. Mm -hmm. So you can say, Hey, I'm going to, uh, one of the categories that we have a lot of very large players in is real estate education and yes. real estate information and coaching around it. Well, I could take a real estate coaching class and, or get a coach that's five, 10, 20, 30, 50 grand. And I happen to have done a lot of real estate investing. So yeah. my assessment would be very different than a new person who paid that five, 10, 15, 20, 50 grand, right? We would have a mm. different assessment of the value of the product. So that results in more disputes. Yeah, dude, I get it. So subjecting quality completely relates to us because the, yeah, because the, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. They're the beholder. They get to choose whether they liked it or they didn't. Uh, and if they have an off day or an off month, then that puts them more likely to subjectively score us negative. It's definitely high ticket. And there is a future deliverable, whether it's paid up front or it's paid, you know, a month in, a, you know, a month in advance, either way. Um, okay, so I, I totally am getting this. By the, way, by the way, guys, can you do me a favor and just into the chat, uh, type in either questions as they come in like some of you have been or uh, insights and take uh, insights and kind of ahas as we go. I've got a couple of questions that have come up, Brad, that uh, we can either address now or later. I don't know if you can see them in the chat. Um, I so can, yeah. So a year in advance, says Jason, a little while ago, they've got one year and six months of dispute. That's correct. You got it. Okay. That's not great news. Um, Anne says, do they hold it in a reserve account and for how long? If customers only pay once or they're making payments, not subscription, how does that cl get classified in terms of risk? Different risk. So yeah. three questions there. Uh, uh, reserves are a way to mitigate risk. And so a reserve is when you would hold, that's what I referenced where this one processor who was Evo, by the way, which is a huge global processor, mm. EVO. Um, and I, I can't even, I, they are actually they're too big to adequately monitor risk. So they do categorical sweeps all the time. So, and think about it this way. If you have, you know, a million uh, businesses on the books yeah. and you are trying to control risk, yeah. are you going to go into independent accounts and assess no. risk? No, no. you're going to look at yeah. what categories pose the most risk and knock them out. Um, so it makes sense, right? It's logical. Uh, yeah. But one method to control risk is putting holding 10% of the money. And the most common terms for that are to hold 10% for six months on a rolling basis. Meaning that 
they would hold 10% of your volume for January, February, March, April, May, June. And then on July, they would release January's 10%. And then on August, yeah, and then, then the next February's month they'll release February, et cetera. Right. So that's they one option. Want six months. That's yeah. and that's the most common. Okay. Um, there are scenarios where a processor would take some money up front and just say, you know what, instead of six months, we're just going to keep 50 grand. And if you pay us that now, then we're good. Yeah. Um, I remember when I first got started, I talked to, uh, um, I think it was ANZ had an online merchant account, no NAB, one a local bank here in Australia, National Australia Bank. And uh, they wanted uh, one month's, no, I think they wanted three, uh, one or two or three months cash flow just for them. Now, I was like, dude, there's no way I'm giving you, you know, my livelihood. And they were like, okay, well, then you can't bank with us. I was like, okay, so I went someplace else. Um, I totally yep. get it. So option one is they hold some money for a period of time uh, as reserve. Option two is maybe they hold a chunk of cash. Uh, I've also heard about some people just kind of hanging on to money for an extra few weeks. Have you seen that? Super uncommon. Okay. Um, and so, I thought that Stripe yeah. was doing that with coaching. They had like 14 days. We're going to hang on to your money before we release it. No, Stripe hates coaching. I mean, they just, it, that's a, and this is why. So let me ask you something. Why, why is 10% for six months the most common term? I don't know. It's because consumers have six months to dispute the charge. Got it. Okay. Right. So they want to hold the money for six months to make sure that that covers their costs. Now that 10% is somewhat arbitrary, but it's covering a uh, dispute and increased dispute in the event of your company going under. Yeah. That makes tons of sense. Okay. So, uh, well, I'm really glad we got you on the line. I'm not usually a bad news guy, but this found, this sounds like bad news you need to know about. <laughs> Um, yeah, it is. It's just, it's, and there are ways to navigate it. It's just really important to be aware of it, specifically yeah. when you're in a space that is really riddled with challenges, which coaching is. Yeah, correct. And a bunch of uh, the, you know, click funnels and other kind of, uh, um, you know, funnel building tools have Stripe and PayPal plug in super easy. And so a ton of us use Stripe, for example. Uh, and uh, Stripe's definitely had some, some issues. Uh, Three years ago, I got locked out of my PayPal and I haven't been able to open it up since. And there's just a ton of money just sitting in this freaking account. Um, uh, okay. So Dave is asking, are there certain processes that are more friendly, like QuickBooks, Stripe, et cetera? Sounds like the answer to that is probably yes, but it's probably not Stripe. Yeah, the answer is definitely yes. And I'll, I'll answer that by explaining how Stripe works and how they're different. Okay. So um, Stripe and PayPal are what we call merchant account aggregators. Mm -hmm. And they fundamentally work differently than other merchant account providers. Okay. So they aggregate the risk across all of the businesses that they allow to process. And that is why when you set up a Stripe account or a PayPal account, most of the time you're approved immediately and you can process cards that day. Yes. What that means is they don't know who you are, what you do, how you do it, uh, what you sell, how you deliver it, if you deliver it. And so the only way for them to control this risk is retroactively is by holding money or closing the account. And so if you right. Google, you know, Stripe frozen funds or PayPal horror stories, et cetera, et cetera, you're going to see millions upon millions of hits. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like at some point uh, Google and PayPal had a little conversation and swept some of that under the rug because it used to be worse for PayPal. I think there's a little right. brand repu reputation uh, repair there, but um, but fundamentally, that's how they work. And by the way, that's not good or bad. That's just how that business model works. Yep. Right. The upside to that is it allows people to process payments immediately. Yes. The, the unfortunate significant negative in the case of many business owners, if you have a lot of momentum and all of a sudden you lose the ability to accept payments, it's a little bit of a problem. Yeah, a little bit of a problem, uh, both for uh, shuts down your ability to collect new money from sales. And number two, the money that we've all got sitting as recurring monthly payments you know, disappears in a day. So I think that sets up uh, the obvious question, which is, okay, Brad Wymott, what do we do about this tricky situation? Yeah, so the other way to approach merchant accounts instead of auto approving them and dealing with the risk on the back end mm. is to underwrite accounts thoroughly, get to know who you are, what you do, how you do it, what your history is, what your marketing model is. Mm. And so that we have, and if we've underwritten thoroughly, 
um, those providers will have much less likelihood of closing the account or holding money later because they know what they're getting into. Now, by the way, does not eliminate the possibility of that happening, but it heavily reduces it. Yes. So the, the first thing that you can do to mitigate the risk is work with the right providers. Um, mm. The, in the general rule of thumb is if you got approved and you're able to process immediately, like within a day, they didn't do any underwriting. Yeah. Right. So easy up, easy down is a yep. good rule of thumb. Um, the, uh, a couple specifics, um, authorize.net is a payment gateway. So let me address that because it'll help you understand what, what the full picture is here. So mm. if you go to a, um, a grocery store, you push your shopping cart up to the counter and you put your card into a little machine. Mm. That little machine connects to a merchant account on the back end. Online, you have a digital shopping cart. Instead of it connecting to a machine, there's a gateway there. And that gateway connects to a merchant account. So the gateway sort of replaces a credit card machine in the e-commerce world. So authorize.net is that gateway, it's that middle part. And they would then farm out the setup of the merchant account to somebody else. Um, and Stripe serves the role in PayPal, both serve the role of both the shopping cart. I'm sorry. Yeah, both the shopping cart and the, uh, I'm sorry, both the gateway and the merchant account provider. So like yes. Kartra would be the shopping cart to somebody's question. Yep. And the merchant account, the gateway and merchant account provider could be Stripe or it could be authorized.net and another provider. Helpful. Um, and, and Kartra, I don't have a good suggestion with them other than, uh, they are, I think they're bound to Stripe right now, uh, mm -hmm. much to the dismay of constant uh, annoyance with the CTO and myself. And uh, they, one of the original founders of Kartra parted ways and we lost our integration when that happened. So they're stuck with Stripe and PayPal at the moment. Yeah, right. That makes sense. Okay. That's helpful. Um, okay. So how, um, let me just kind of ask a, devil's advocate question. How much of a risk is this? I, I know you can't say everyone needs to do something about this in the next three days or you're screwed, but like, is this a, uh, is this a possible, is it a probable, is it, you know, can you, can you speak to that at all? Or is it, is that difficult to say? Um, I don't think it's difficult to say at all. I mean, I, I would under no circumstances personally run a coaching business without having multiple merchant accounts. And that's okay. the second, that, that's the, the number one thing that you can do um, outside of making sure that they're the right providers is have more than one option to accept payments. Um, so there are a bunch of ways to do that, but that's a, a, a mission critical thing for me. And there are, there are a number of industries where it's like, no way would I run it without that. My general rule of thumb is that if you're doing more than, you know, 300, 400 grand a year, um, you, you start to hit the radar of a provider. So if they're going to make a, a sweeping change to their accounts, they're going to look for people over about that volume and, uh, and make a change there. If not just the entire category. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that sounds like it's a legit concern. Well, and that's in general yeah. right now. Um, like we're actively seeing people, target this space. So we have a longtime provider that um, has worked with a lot of huge clients um, and still does. And mm. they also last Friday came in and said, hey, we're putting a 10% reserve only on coaching. So it wasn't several categories. It, it was just, hey, coaching, mm -hmm. we think poses a higher risk. Yeah, wow. And if <laughs> our, our rep literally said, if they don't like it, they can go somewhere else. Um, so yeah, I think that there's a heightened risk in this space right now. Got it. Okay. So that's okay. Well, that's great. Uh, how do we choose the right provider? <laughs> and yeah, it's awesome. Can everyone just yeah. like rub their hands together like you're a kid on Christmas morning and say, Oh goody, because that sounds like great news. Um, yeah. Okay. So what do we need to know? And what do we need to do? Obviously uh, chat to us a little bit about what a right provider looks like and then any kind of shortcuts. I know that uh, from the conversation we had a week or so ago, um, different regions in the world are kind of like different payment regions. Australia is like mm -hmm. a separate payment region. Uh, what, yeah, what do we need to know about like what to look for in a good provider? Uh, and then um, give us some, 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 some suggestions. Yeah. So um, the uh, Australia is a different region and uh, Visa MasterCard are broken up into six or seven regions. 
North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Australia, and uh, Australia operates differently than most regions, and there aren't that many options. Um, Great. We, I know, I know. We have uh, <laughs> we have a couple there, which is yeah. good. And we, uh, after talking to you, Taki, we uh, uh, opened the door with another Australian provider that we're uh, comfortable with right now. Um, yes. But uh, the we obviously we have a lot of a lot more options in the U.S. Um, yeah. How you assess providers on your own is really are they asking the questions about your business? If they don't ask you what the highest transaction is, if they don't ask you how long it takes you to deliver the product, mm -hmm. um, if they don't want to look at your previous processing statements and or your previous bank statements, they're not doing any underwriting. So that means that they're going to open the account and not understand the risk of your business, Got right? It. And you like the direct comparison is if you went to get a mortgage and they gave you the mortgage, even though you didn't actually show them any pay stubs and you just told them that you made yeah. a half a million dollars a year. Well, we saw how that went down in 08. Yeah. Right. You have yeah, to yeah. underwrite accounts in order to be able to effectively manage the risk. Yeah. Super clear. Um, so Kylie Ryan is asking about Amex merchant services and eWay. I don't know how familiar you are with eWay. They're a pretty big, uh, provider here in Australia as a mm -hmm. gateway. Yeah. So I, I don't know them super well. I know that I think that, um, they are both a gateway and set up merchant accounts for you. Yeah, I think um, you're correct. Uh, but I, I honestly, I, I don't know enough about them. And I, I'm happy to follow up with my thoughts via email or in a group or something, if that's helpful. Because um, I don't know them well enough to give you a, a strong opinion or endorsement. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. Helpful. Um, okay. So we want to know, are they asking the right questions? And then let's say we find somebody who is uh, maybe someone who you has cool hair and is the processes <laughs> for a bunch of big name gurus. Hypothetically, um, do we just like set up an account and have it sitting there as a backup or like, do you need to like run actively run things through it? Like what, yeah. what do you need to do to kind of keep it going? I think that's kind of important to know. It's super important to know. It's we, we have an, we have an unfortunate amount of people in our database that have set up accounts and don't use them because mm. they have this sense of security around. I have a backup okay. and uh, that is, it, it absolutely serves no purpose. And it's actually probably worse for you because you have a sense of security um, than just not having one at all. And so um, why is that a problem? Because like uh, to an untrained eye, you go, well, I've got this other account and if my strike gets shut down, I'll switch to these guys. What's the, what's the danger? The issue is um, you set off all of the risk flags when you go from zero, 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 zero. Oh shit, a lot of volume. Got it. Right? And so in anybody's book, all, we have, we, every payment provider has, you know, some sort of algorithm or set of risk rules that's going to automatically trigger um, for a variety of things. And if you have significant refunds, significant declines, those things trigger as well. But mm -hmm. if you just have a spike in volume, that's big reason for concern um, for lots of reasons, right? A, what happened? Is it fraud? B, we, let's say we underwrote the account for a certain dollar amount and now they're going way past it. That's, do they have the ability to pay back the chargebacks if something happens, right. um, et cetera, et cetera. So those spikes are bad. So if you have a backed up account mm -hmm. sitting and all of a sudden you have a spike, it raises flags. Okay. Oh, such good pictures. Dude, are you digging this? This is what we I call the merchant provider WTF moment. Uh, it's so good. Yeah. Uh, okay. So if you have, if you're like zero and then it goes to everything, uh, let's say you do 300 grand, uh, you know, 30 grand a month over here, and then it gets shut down and you just port everybody over. Then all of a sudden you get a spike and that freaks people out a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. okay. That's really helpful. And so I got two questions. One is, uh, if we do have a second account, what percentage might we put into it? Like, do you 50, 50, do you, you know, 20, 80, 20, any thoughts about that? Uh, and then, um, yeah. So what's the best way to split it? I guess is first question. And then 
is there a way to, eat? let's say we've got people set up on a recurring payment over here. Is it, is there an easy way to port those payments over here without having to like manually re-enter them? I guess, is it? Yeah. Um, so two questions. Uh, one, how you distribute it. I mean, honestly, it's just important that you do distribute it. Um, and 50, 50 is generally what we'll do just as a starting point. Cause it's an easy way to do it. And, uh, to the point of the spike, if you kept your original provider doing 80 and you're only doing 20 here, you're still going to have a pretty significant spike if you have to get up to 100. Mm -hmm. So 50-50 at least keeps it balanced out. Um, in terms of uh, recurring billing, depending on the platform, you can generally port recurring billing from one gateway into another because that okay. data is tokenized. So nerdy tech stuff but it allows us to port it over as long as the provider cooperates and uh, Stripe uh, will cooperate, um, authorize.net will cooperate, uh, but they are both difficult, uh, but we are good at working with them. Um, okay, and so, so, can, yeah, where, yeah, so wherever you take it, it's, it's important to know that both of those platforms will port it. Whether Just to be super quick, can you say them again? It was Stripe and? And authorize.net is the other one I mentioned, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, they have the ability to port it. If somebody, if one of them tells you no, um, they are misinformed um, or something. But yeah, definitely. Uh, Ronsley says, this has happened to me twice. PayPal kept 76 grand for seven months and then 122 grand for five months in 2016, 2017. Well, I mean, they're nice. Don't you think you should just give it to them, Ronsley? No. Yeah, pretty, no. Okay. I don't, I don't even want to get started on <laughs> PayPal. Let's not, let's not go there, but. Uh, it has happened and it, and it happens a lot and they, they, they just, just extend it out and, and they asked for all sorts of documents and it just kept going and it was just frustrating, but you know, it is, it, it does happen and it does happen a lot. It happens twice to me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and so by the way, does anyone else here vote that if it happens to them, they can just request that PayPal does it to Ronsley instead. He's used to it now. <laughs> 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 Well, what Ronsley said was they asked for a whole bunch of documents. Well, that's, yeah. that's what underwriting is. We that's just we'd rather do it on the front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're just doing the risk assessment on the back end, right? If we got the documents on the front end, if they did, they could have assessed that on the front end yeah. and made the decision then, right? So that's our preference. We would rather, and by the way, you know, if it takes us two days, five days, two weeks to underwrite an account, we lose clients that way. Right. It's yeah. much more productive for Stripe and PayPal. They turn people on immediately. Their conversion is going to be way higher on the front end. Yes. I just don't like that model. Right. It puts people in jeopardy like this. And that's why we target the space because we believe that this is a better approach. Yeah, that's helpful. Okay. So, uh, dude, this has been really helpful. Do you guys have any follow up questions for Brad? Um, um, in terms of. Got a couple. Yeah, a couple in here, QuickBooks, uh, Intuit, um, they don't do very good underwriting. Mm -hmm. And they're actually pretty vocal about not liking certain industries also. Yeah, Kylie, if they're easy in, they're easy out is what I'm picking up. And if they're trickier on the way in or more thorough, then you're more protective is what I'm hearing. Brad, does that sound like a good summary? It is. That's a good rule of thumb. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So. Um, I, uh, I searched my Rolodex of all of the people in the payment industry who I'm good friends with. Uh, and it was a pretty short list, dude. I, like, I, frankly, I know you. And uh, uh, Daryl <laughs> Daryl Hicks is in there too. I know Daryl. Yeah, I actually, I messaged Daryl and he said to talk to you, which was cool. Um, so um, yeah, do you want to just talk to us a little bit about how, uh, how you guys do things at Easy Pay Direct, uh, what the process might look like for anyone who does want to set up a, a backup system? Yeah, sure. Um, and I'll also give you some less scary, maybe helpful things that you can do to help reduce the likelihood of having an issue right now, aside from just, oh shit, everything's scary. Okay. Um, well, let's do, let, that need, feels like a good place to start, dude. Yeah. So I think that uh, the, the number one thing that will help uh, control risk in general right now mm -hmm. is communicating with clients that have already purchased things. So um, making refunds easy and communicating if the kind of the terms of service are going to change. Meaning, Say hey, 
Well, you know, if you, the, the obvious ones are, Hey, I had a live event scheduled and it's not going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Well, obviously you need to tell them, but in yeah. addition, you need to uh, change it and say, Hey, well, and it's, you can change it and say, Hey, we're going to do a virtual event, but it probably also makes sense to say, okay, well, do I have lower overhead as a result of doing a virtual event versus a live event? Can I refund some of that money? Right. right? It does that make sense? Or are you willing to do it? And even if you, uh, even if you don't have lower overhead somehow, um, you still have to look at that because there's a balance of if you get chargebacks and it runs the risk of closing your account, is it easier or more effective to just proactively try to address it? Got it. Um, but whatever it is, it's modifying the services in a way that makes your, your customers happy, your clients happy. Yep. Um, yeah, and one of the things we talked about uh, was how do you deliver uh, either the same for less, like you just talked about, or more for same. Love it. Yeah, okay. Love super it. good. Yeah, that's super helpful. Um, and then the other are, I don't know that, and this is kind of industry by industry, people see people doing different things. Um, hmm provide or companies that are having a hard time generating right now mm -hmm. um, bundled services and discounted services are effective in some markets meaning hey if you buy it now we'll give you more now i recognize and, and i hope everybody that uh, I'm, I'm in risk mode all the time so there's yeah. a big flag there which is you're extending the deliverability on that right yeah you're saying hey i'm going to sell you services and then you'll get it later so yeah, that can raise a flag for a provider, um, but lots of consumers like that, right? So like I have a uh, um, biohacker physical therapy person and he's just crushed right now. Yeah, he's, of course. he's seeing 30% of the people he was seeing. And I said, look, man, you need to go out and pre-sell, you know, give, give people a discount and pre-sell. And uh, he ran a little promo and sold a whole bunch of stuff for the next you know, who, who knows, like packages of 10 and 20. Um, yeah. But and so the client gets a deal knowing they're not going to be able to fulfill for a little while. Um, but, you know, the, the dude's got some cash. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, along the lines of uh, communicating with clients, one of the things that the, the, the providers that are actually talking to people are saying is that you should consider pausing recurring billing. Meaning, hey, okay. you've got somebody in an annual subscription. Don't charge them for two months because they might be out of work at the moment or you might not be delivering the services the same, et cetera. And these are all case by case, right? So yeah, I'm these not, aren't rules. These are, these are things on a menu. You got it. Yeah, good. Cool. Um, yeah, just to be super clear, I'm not taking that menu item. <laughs> not, for, yep. not for one hot second. Yeah, well, and there's some services that you can absolutely deliver in a functional way through this whole thing, right? Yeah. And then there's some that you clearly can't. Yeah, right? correct. Like, so I'm a part of a, a entrepreneur membership group that's 35 grand a year, and we just missed an entire meeting. It's one of four meetings that we have a year. Yeah, so you missed a quarter of your opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. They, they said, oh, well, we're going to do it virtual. Well, it would behoove them to probably just refund some of the money for the annual commitment because right. the virtual event does not serve the same purpose for the group as an in-person event. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can get away with it and everybody's happy, great. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that I saw that was really cool is we've had uh, actually uh, Matt, Matt Bertulli um, oh, yeah. did this and suggested this and it was <clears throat> increasing affiliate commissions for people that are promoting your service. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I thought it was super clever because it's, you know, now you've got all these people that are out promoting stuff. Um, and if you are the one that has the better deal right now, they'll promote you instead. Yep. That's great. Thank you. Super helpful. Okay. Yeah. So let's, um, let's just pause. Guys, I'd love to get some feedback from you. What's been most, uh, uh, most interesting or most helpful from having this conversation with Brad? right now can you just bang it into the chat i'd like to kind of have a quick look at uh at uh what's been most helpful so far and then brad if you're cool with it Nate, what i'd love to do is is talk a bit about how your deal works um just so people have some options about where to go uh being aware of the risk says jason 
payment process of payment gateway account uh, account difference was difference uh, was massive. Jason says thanks, Brad. Uh, multiple merchant accounts and mitigating risk. Creating a backup or fail safe account and actually run some money through them to stay active. Yeah, so you don't go from zero to to dangerous in one fell swoop. I think that's that makes sense. I'm um, trying to find different way to work with Kartra before I'm too far down the hole. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, um, I don't have a great option for that. I, like I, I literally talked to one of my guys that's been poking them, uh, and his words were, "Yeah, their CTO basically told me to fuck off," uh, and that's. I, I laughed because I was like, "Yeah, I, I know him." Um, so we're working on the integration. <laughs> I just don't know when it's going to happen. It's on the list, um, and uh, we're integrated to every other platform under the sun. Kartra just has been a difficult one. Yeah, um, Chris, that might be helpful for you to know, dude, because I know you're looking at moving to Kartra for some client stuff. Might be helpful. Um, yeah. So how we are okay. uh, structured is um, Easy Pay Direct is a gateway and uh, a merchant account provider. So uh, the fundamental difference with us is that we are contracted with probably 40 different merchant account providers and banks across the world. Can I ask world. you a dumb question? Is Easy Pay Direct just spelt in plain English or is there, you Americans uh, like to put Z's where they're not meant to go and stuff. So I just need to ask. How do it you is spelt, it is, it is spelled in plain English. Um, we also own the other domain because people are stupid. Of course, no one ever yep. went broke underestimating people's intelligence. So, uh, okay, yep. good. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, our, our, our goal is uh, to assess things on the front end. So mm -hmm. when somebody submits an application with us, we have what's called a new client specialist. They assess whether somebody, we think somebody needs more than one account or not. Um, mm -hmm. They help them fill out the online application. And then if we think they need more than one account, we have a certified payment specialist. Those folks have been in the industry for many, many years um, and they help pair you with the right banks. And so, and they know, we know off the cuff, you know, what banks are currently accepting, what are not. Mm -hmm. um, and we're assessing that all the time. So like this provider last week that said, Hey, we're putting a reserve on coaching right now. Okay. Well, we yeah. know that that's not our first stop. Yeah. Yeah. They probably so like stopped 12. Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, Kylie says more than one account through your gateway. Yeah, so that's key. Um, and there are a couple other uh, gateways and platforms out there that facilitate this. There aren't many, but our mm -hmm. gateway was built uh, deliberately to allow you to put multiple merchant accounts into it and then automatically divide the volume across them. So you can oh. do that seamlessly through ClickFunnels or Infusionsoft or a variety of different platforms. You plug the gateway in and then it just moves the volume between them. That's interesting. Okay. And then uh, one of the things that uh, a bunch of the guys, particularly in boardroom love to do is, is have the Stripe app open on their thing and be able to see the numbers. Um, you know, like a quick little stat check is yep. uh, presumably there's some kind of uh, whatever you call it, little kind of dashboard, which will show us kind of what's going on. Yeah. Favorite app equals Stripe. Yes. Exactly. You know exactly what I'm talking about. The little daily yeah. Stripe check. Oh, a scoreboard check. So we are, um, let me see if I, uh, the short answer to that is we have great reporting in the gateway. We don't have as many pretty pictures as Stripe. Um, also, we are, uh, uh, it is like at the tail end of development. And so I hate yes. to ever give dates with development because that's a terrible game to play. Yeah. Um, but uh, as in, I, we are, we've gone through many iterations of what this might look like. And so uh, what we're, what we're finalizing is the ability to pull in all Stripe data, all PayPal data, all merchant account data, all authorized.net data and see it in one dashboard and be oh, able to segment cool. stuff that way. Yeah. That's really clever. Cool. Okay. Um, dude, one of the things, uh, again, I'm asking questions that I imagine that you guys would be asking. And if you have specific ones, please bang them into the chat. Um, I'm new to this, this world as well. I don't currently have a backup and that's why I'm, I wanted Brad to be here so that me and Karen Marie could kind of review this and make some decisions for ourselves. Um, uh, one of the things people want to know around gateways is, or kind of you know, this whole setup is like, what do the fees look like? Um, yeah. And says, how do the rates compare exactly right? Yeah. I mean, the short answer is they're going to be similar. Um, mm -hmm. uh, they are, we tend to be a little bit less expensive than like a Stripe. Um, there, are, there are two variables with pricing. 
really three. It's do you have any monthly fees that are fixed? And then it is the percentage and the transaction fee. Yes. Right. And so Stripe is 2.9% and 30 cents with no monthly fee, right? That's Stripe's pricing. Yep. Um, two things to be aware of. Stripe in most cases actually has an, ad an additional tier of pricing, which they call non-qualified or downgrade pricing, which ends up being three and a half percent in 30 cents. They just don't advertise that pricing or show it, but it's still there. Yes. So that's a really, so does PayPal. And so that's a really important thing to understand is that almost always there's this non-qualified tier of pricing um, that people are paying. Um, and if you divide out your fees, you can see that they don't equate to 2.9% yeah. most of the time. Yes. Um, Go on. So our default pricing is 2.39% and 29 cents. And then our downgrade rate is three and a half percent and 29 cents. So it's very similar. Can you, and by the way, sorry, man, um, no, dumb no. question. Yeah. I'm ignorant. What's a, what is, what's downgrade mean? That's a great question. And sometimes I forget to simplify. Uh, I understand so, that it's more expensive, but I don't understand why. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, who likes frequent flyer miles and stuff? I did until my airline went broke three days ago. I've got <laughs> 4 million points with Virgin Australia. 4 million points with Virgin Australia, dude, and I can't use them. I'm like, oh, this is not great. Um, I'm, uh, I'm still confident in my Delta. Uh, yeah. But uh, that's, how, uh, that's how the point systems work, is downgrades. So that 3.5%, that the difference there is the, the card itself is more expensive to operate. So all of the perks and benefits, et cetera, and risk that come with those cards um, mm -hmm. is baked into a higher fee. And so there's actually literally a higher cost on the back end to operate that card. Mm -hmm. So if a business card comes through, it's gonna fall into that category more often than not. Oh, hang on. So, so if the person who's buying our stuff is paying with one of those cards, the risk profile is higher. So the, ah, oh, I had no idea. You got it. And so that yeah. whole point system is based around this stuff. And it's two things. It's perks and fraud. Those are the yeah, two yeah, things yeah. that control the back end cost. Um, okay. Basically. That's super cool. So the free comply was not a metaphor. That was the actual thing. Yeah. Okay, good. I was thinking metaphorically, but now I get it. Thank you for yeah. explaining it to, to an Australian. It's good. You've done really well, bro. Translating yeah. it to my, to my <laughs> level. Um, Hey, so Chris is saying, do I go here, easypaydirect.com and set up an application? I'm a meathead. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, you do. Okay. Yeah, and it's uh, uh, our office closed about 45 minutes ago, but if you put something in, somebody will respond first thing in the morning. Perfect, thank you. Uh, Kira Marie Moore, uh, who happens to be married to Taki Moore, she's my favorite human, uh, ah, says, nice. uh, how will you cope with an influx of people capacity-wise? Um, well, <laughs> we, uh, we, you know, kind of perfect storm for us. It wasn't quite perfect, but, um, I hired six more people, um, six weeks ago mm -hmm. and, um, we were at bandwidth. Uh, so we needed the people, um, yeah. but that bandwidth got swallowed up pretty quickly. Um, so we're, uh, we're busier than ever. And, you know, I mean, our, are, we're just in, the, in a good place with this because our business is built around managing instability and risk in the banking world, yeah. right? So that now if this lasts longer, uh, systemically, we have a much larger problem, right? There's just less money in the system if this lasts longer. Yeah. Um, but for the moment, e-commerce volume is way up um, yeah. and the need for our services is way up. So we're... Uh, we're busy, busy. Now the downside is I've been sick for five weeks. Yeah, you um, have. So I'm staying at home and um, trying to sleep. Yeah, luckily you're not the guy manually processing our transactions though. So it's true. Like... <laughs> yeah, great. yeah. Sorry, I can't charge you now because Brad's Brad's not feeling well today. That was <laughs> worst answer ever. Um, hey, Jason Everett's got a question. Jason, can you just unmute and ask that? Because I don't. I, it's probably yeah. It's probably easier if you just talk direct to Brad. Yeah, totally. What, first of all, what's up, Brad? It's been a long time since we were on the uh, slopes in uh, Canada, brother, man. Good to see you. By yeah, the way. man. You too, dude. You too. Dude, I was, I was mad I wasn't there this year. Let me just tell you. 
Um, it was a great so, year, dude. Yeah, don't I, I no, don't even talk <laughs> about it. it. Just pretend like it didn't happen. Um, so, dude, I have a question, which is, uh, when I first started doing all these payments, uh, like monthly reoccurring charges, and actually when I had coaching before, we had two prices. We had like if you do a you know direct bank transfer, it's twenty five hundred bucks a month, and then we were charging a three percent. Uh, add on top of that service if somebody's paying for credit card with the idea being that like we wanted to you know not incentivize people for paying with credit card we would occasionally get people say that's illegal you can't do that there's nothing you can do even though like at the you know gas station you can have a cash price and a you know and it's not cash it's like you know atm card price and then a credit card price um and so i kind of i lost a lot of clients that way like they would that would literally be their sticking point for not working with us um, and so we just went away with it. We only do credit card charges. And then just like literally for the last couple of weeks, I saw some random new processor out there called kick fees. It's like, Hey, we only charge you 49 bucks a month, no credit card processing fees. And after looking into it, what they do is they charge the customer, the processing fees. So, you know, they would still pay the 2,500 bucks and then they pass the fee direct to the customer. So I didn't know what the official was on that. And I wanted to know what, you know, and it was probably more than me. Mm. Yeah. Um, so it was, there, first of all, there's a big divide, never illegal, um, but against Visa MasterCard regulations. Oh, so, okay, good to know. Yeah, so Visa and MasterCard are, are the, the government in this situation, right? And they're not even, they're like God, like they just make the rules and that's the deal. Yeah, well, the banks, that's um, pretty much the jam, man. Totally. So, uh, however, a long time ago, like 10, 15 years ago, um, those rules changed and allowed you to have a surcharge. Now you saw people were playing with the language of like, if you pay cash, you can have a cash discount. That used to be the only way you could do it, but you couldn't charge more for using a credit card. That was Visa and MasterCard's rules. Uh, you could give a discount for paying cash. For cash. Yep. And then that changed uh, years back to, no, you can absolutely do a surcharge. It just has to be wrapped as a surcharge. Now, here's the thing. Uh, so th those are the those are the rules. Yeah, but the thing language is, shenanigans. Yep, totally. Um, mm -hmm. But what you ran into is really all that matters, which yeah, is customers. Are consumers going to be okay with it? And yeah. the answer is, it's way easier to just hide the three percent in the total price and then never totally. talk about it, right? Yeah, Increasing yeah, yeah. your prices by three percent isn't going to turn anybody away. But right. telling them they have to pay 3% more to pay your credit card fees. Yeah, it was a silly okay. friction, man. It was totally, totally worthless. Yep. Agreed. Okay. All right, cool, man. I just want to figure that out because I, I, you know, I, we were talking about switching over to this kick fees. I'm like, dude, I would save thousands. I mean, dude, this would be so much better than come to find out. Yep. They're just passing that on to the consumer, which then they're just going to pay a fee and that doesn't really help anybody. Yeah, it might just make everybody angry. Yeah, it's just cost of business, man. I got you. Okay, yeah. thanks, man. Good to see you, by the way. Yeah, you too, man. All right, dude. Um, Brad, this is super helpful. Um, I, by the way, I just spied in your background. You've got my, one of my top two all time favorite business books there. Maverick, Ricardo Semler. You know, it's, it's turned out because I haven't read it yet. And oh, so dude. it's, it's you should literally my next book. thing. Yeah. yeah so I've so, just, I just reread, um, Ray Dalio's principles. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, uh, that's next. So I'm glad you okay, said so that. Okay, so let me give you, yeah, it's amazing. If you want a little like bout of inspiration to get you into that book, uh, check out Ricardo Semler's TED Talk. It's amazing. And uh, that might inspire you to get the book or decide that it's not for you. Uh, to, you know, jump Love in the book it. or decide it's not for you. Yeah, watch this TED Talk, it's great. Uh, okay, so um, easypaydirect.com is the link if somebody does want to set up their backups. Um, Anne is busy filling in the thing and she's asking what, industry types you should choose in the in the form probably something that says information coaching if that's what you i'll pull it up and tell you exactly yeah mm -hmm. uh, the book is called maverick by ricardo semler i read it when i was uh maybe 17 uh dad had like 100 copies he was a management consultant and used to give it to people it was a, an amazing book business uh, coaching yeah yeah. Okay. Business coaching is the drop down. Oh, that sounds fairly mm -hmm. straightforward. And I choose that one. Um, <laughs> super, yeah. Super cool. All right. Um, are there any other follow-up questions for Brad? Brad, I'm super um, grateful for your, for your time today. If there's any other questions, I'd love to answer them, uh, ask and answer them right now. And if there's not, then uh, let's give Brad, um, you know, a chance to get back to bed and recover from whatever he's got.
that's that's pretty much next move. If you put Brad in the promo code, that'll probably get you some extra eyes on the on the deal. Actually, well, you know what? Put Taki in there. Even better. That seems seems awesome. Or Taki Brad. Or just make something up. It's great. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the promo code will just let us know that that's where it came from. And the team does see it and look at it. So if uh, my name's in there, it's, uh, it is helpful. Okay, cool. You can put Brad Taki in it, whatever that I means. I like it. Um, Jason yeah. says, Brad, do you have the Rona? Uh, I have been tested, and uh, it came back negative. Um, but whatever I've had, I've had for five weeks. So, yeah, that's not fun. Kiri Marie's had the same, dude. I think she's in week five as well. It's not fun at all. She's really brutal. struggling. Yeah, it's brutal. So I've decided that I'm going to stop drinking bourbon for a little while. Yeah. And, uh, and rest more. You know, they sound like good, good life decisions, man. I'm proud of you. Yeah, thanks. All right. Uh, I can't see any other questions in here. Guys, um, this has been helpful, man. Just like, uh, even if all you take away from this is some wisdom for you and wisdom for clients, amazing. And if you on the front foot about this, you'll set up a, 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 um, you know, a separate, you know, a, a, like a backup account and start putting money through it, whether it's Brad's or I don't really care, but like, you just want to be safe. There'd be nothing worse than having a business that's, you know, you've worked your ass off for the last week, uh, sorry, last month, kind of weathering the storm, navigating clients through it. And then some idiot in a payment company decides to shut you down or hold on to your cash that would just be the worst thing ever so um you know protect yourself Kieran and i will have a chat after this and we'll get ourselves started with you too brad thank you man this has question. been super helpful Got a question oh yeah of course yeah. Man. hey um just real quick uh so i use kajabi as my shopping cart will that work or do i need to use woocommerce to integrate let me i think off the cuff that Kajabi, that our gateway isn't integrated with Kajabi. We can set up merchant accounts for it, but we'd have to, um, but we can't use our gateway, which means that we can't automatically split the volume with Kajabi. So um, what I could do though, is I could manually process through WooCommerce maybe. Well, and we are directly integrated with WooCommerce. Okay. So our gateway ties right into WooCommerce. That was a very geeky question. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's not. Well, I just glazed over and I went, okay, let the notes chat for a bit. Jo Jonathan uh, is the, the president of Kajabi and we've talked about integrations there too. Um, so that's another like on the docket, just not done yet. Yep. Um, Jade's got a follow-up question. Um, my roommate just said she moved all her members to recurring invoice via Square. Any thoughts on oh, that? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I think that's, that's terrifying. Uh, <laughs> So Square is the same thing as PayPal and Stripe. Um, it's, it, uh, it's the same model, right? It's fine if you're a coffee shop um, that has inherently low risk. Well, yeah, in, in, yeah. In, yeah. inherently low risk. Yeah, uh, most people don't buy their coffee and then instantly charge it back. Right, well, and even, even if they hate it, they're not oh, gonna charge it back. They they're a co-working space, so maybe it's appropriate. Yeah, oh. no, Brad's not no. loving it. Sorry, no, Jade, it's, it's, it's membership what about, based. What about Rise up Zero, just moving people over to recurring invoice zero um, and having them through the zero accounting platform? Yeah, and then not like them just having them pay via their direct debit or any other normal way. D direct debits are great. Um, the like, if you can get people to ACH stuff, that's great. It's just more difficult to have people do that. ACH um, is the American word for direct debit for Aussies. Okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah. There are like uh, six another, different. Another really dumb yeah. Aussie question. Um, Chris is filling in the form. Australian driver's license don't have an issue date. They've just got a uh, expiry date. Yeah. Just put something in. I hate that. The, the issue expiry, the only reason we even have that is we have one banking partner that mandates it. I think it's the dumbest thing ever. Like, yeah. so your license expired and it's not you anymore. What? Yeah. Okay, put in a number is what we're saying. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Good question. All right, Matt, this has been helpful. Um, 58 minutes in. Mate, I just want to say thank you. This has been super great. Can everyone just unmute for a second and say thanks to Brad? This has been really uh, informative uh, and uh, super practical. Thanks, thanks Brad. Brad. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Love brother, it. man. Appreciate your time. Um, yeah, get well soon, dude. And uh, yeah, big love from us. You'll be hearing from me and Kieran Marie in the next, uh, next 24 hours. Love it. And let Appreciate me know as soon as you're on Katra. Go make friends with your CTO, for God's sake. I, I'm trying. Tell him. Yeah. Make a request. Go make friends with <laughs> What do we need to do? Bobby. 
Yep, both both of them. Both of you, the, the best thing you can do for us is make a request and say, hey, can you be connected with Easy Pay Direct? Okay, I'm on that right now. I'll do yeah, it now. Because they listen to customers more than us. Yeah. Do you want Please. to give us an email address so we can make like yeah. contact Brad right now? Yeah, I can't really give you the CTO as I don't think it'll be helpful either. I think it's actually better if it organically comes through All right. just the form of like, hey, I really want to use Easy Pay Direct with you. Um, okay. Otherwise, they'll be like, Brad, fucking leave me alone. You, why, why, why do you keep asking me? Yeah, got it. Bubbled up. Cool, man. Hey, thank you so much for hanging out today. I really appreciate you. Um, next time we're in Austin, let's uh, eat great food and uh, drink great drink. Love I it. Appreciate your time. Hopefully, my Rona will be gone then. Yeah, your Rona will be gone. Like, frankly, your Rona is going to be gone way before we're allowed to fly to Austin. So um, that's probably true. <laughs> that is a hundred percent true. All right, brother. Love it. Good to see you, um, man. Big love in. I appreciate you. Thanks so much for taking some time today. I'm super grateful. Absolutely.